Welcome to church. We are so glad that you're here. And we want you to know that when you walk through our doors today, you didn't just walk into a building. You walked into a family. And regardless of who you are, where you came from, or what you look like, you are welcome here. Because at this church, we believe that God is love. And that He is in the business of rekindling lost passions, restoring broken dreams, and filling empty lives. At this church, we believe that life in Christ is not a formula of rules and laws, but a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with Jesus. And His love is infinite and everlasting, without pretense or conditions or discrimination. At this church, we can't stand religion, but we love God. And if you're not quite sure what the difference is yet, we can't wait to show you. We're glad you joined us today. Welcome to church. Hey. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Jamie. What a blessing that is. What a blessing it has been to be in the house of the Lord today. And uh, how glorious it is to be here today and to be in the Lord's house. Uh, children's ministry is dismissed. Uh, I see you guys are sitting here just enjoying the singing. <laughs> and, and then the, my two teachers looked at each other and went, uh-oh, we're supposed to be going somewhere here. Uh, while I'm talking here, uh, if you need a Bible, please hold your hand up around the sanctuary. One of our men will bring you a Bible. Thank you so much. Uh, we have right over there, Brother Jim. And uh, as the Bibles are given out, and I'd like to, for my wife and I, Miss Ruth Ann, we, we want to thank everyone that came to our home last night for Pastor's Open House. What a blessing it was. Amen? And we had some great singing. And, and for those of you that weren't able to make it, we would just like to say... Na 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 na. <laughs> but you know what? We had such a great time. Yes. Pastor, on behalf of the church, can we just thank you for opening up your house the way you did? The, the labor of God that we gave you all of that delicious food was just incredible. Yeah. Oh, we'll bless your heart. Well, let me just share this: is that uh, my wife worked all week, and and she, we love this church. We feel called to serve in this church, and uh, serving means just that. And so, but uh, you know, when, when you love your church, when you love your family, it's, it's not work, you know? Although last night, uh, how many of you guys remember? <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many of you folks remember uh, watching the cartoons and they would like stub their toe or something and you'd see their feet going, wah, wah, wah. That was, well, that was her feet last night. If you were there at 10 o'clock, you saw her in her nice dress and her nice jacket and barefooted. So... Uh, <laughs> So what a great time it was last night. If you have God's Word, all over the sanctuary, please hold it up. Hey, how precious is the Word of the Lord. Please find your way to Matthew chapter 1, verses 18. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23 will be our core text today. And over the next two weeks, we will be looking and focusing on a central passage. If you may, you may remember that last year, I taught a series of messages called The Christmas Names of Jesus. And one of those names is Emmanuel. And in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, we read, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and call and shall call his name Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel means God with us. Isn't that an amazing thought, church? Isn't that just an amazing thought? You know, today... As we look at today's passage, I want you to keep in your mind, I want you to keep in your heart exactly what the Lord has done through for each and every one of us. What the Lord Jesus Christ came to do. I love the fact that we sing all of the songs about the baby Jesus. And how magnificent that is that God would come in the form of a baby born through a vir young virgin, born of the Holy Spirit. But when He returns, He's not coming like as a baby. When Christ returns, He's coming as the conquering King. He's coming as the Lord of Lords. He is coming as the great I Am. And one day, all believers shall stand before Him when, at the rapture, and, and we will go before the Lord in the, the uh, judgment seat of Christ. And at that time, we will be able to lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. Not in any exaltation of ourselves, but in great thanks that we were able to serve the Lord. I don't know about you, I don't want to show up with a paper hat. Amen? So today, in today's passage, we'll be reading from the Word of God, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. 
After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being just a man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take, to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated is God with us. May the Lord have and add his eternal blessings to his eternal word. I just love the word of God. Amen? Amen? It is eternal. It is perfect. It is inerrant. And as we study its truths for our lives, we come to the central point that I say every single week, and I will say it every single week, all the days of my life, whether I'm preaching or not. And it's that God has given us his word, and his word is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you read the Word of God and you don't find Jesus, you're not reading your Bible correctly. Because from the very first words to the very last words, Jesus Christ is its central theme. It's something that I can never quite get over, is what Christ has done for us on the cross. But you know, we still live in a fallen world, amen? amen. We still live in a fallen world, and there's a strange thing about Christians... Pardon me, the strange thing about Christians sometimes too. There's a strange thing about Christmas. For many, it's the happiest time of the year. We get a chance to gather, we get a chance to fellowship, eat a lot of great food. For those of you that left last night, I thank you so much for leaving some food behind. I'm going to be eating gumbo and red beans and rice with sausage and spiral ham and pecan pie and... Oh, all, is, there, is there pecan pie left, honey? Okay, don't give me that look. All right. And, the, and all the, the chocolate chip cookies. I noticed that the children last night all went directly to the staples of life, which was the dessert table that Miss Ruth Ann had put together. But for, you know what? For others, Christmas can be the absolute loneliest time of the year. It can be lonely. It is a statistical fact. That suicides, drunkenness, family fights, and depression all increase at this time of year. It is a statistical fact. But the, ar the irony of the whole thing is this, that our Lord came to be with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Look at verses 22, uh, pardon me, look at verse 23 again. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Just so I clear up anything for folks that are wondering, both renderings, both spellings of the word Emmanuel, leading with an I or leading with an E, are correct. One is Aramaic and one is, is which is based in the Hebrew text, and the other one is uh, Greek in nature. God came to earth to save us. Jesus Christ is God's answer to man's loneliness. If I could get one of my deacons take a look outside and, and get that herd of cattle down the street somewhere. Jesus is God's answer to man's loneliness. And today we have very, three very simple facts. You should have brought had some notes with you today when you, were, when you came into the sanctuary. You'll be able to jot uh, these few things down. So, first off, we see that loneliness is a common fact. Our very first point is that loneliness is a common fact. And we tend to dwell on what loneliness is. But first today, I would like to share with you what loneliness is not. Loneliness is not simply solitude. Solitude can be good. Think about it, moms. Don't you sometimes just want to get alone by yourself? Spend some, some, just spend some time by yourself, and then, oh yeah, let's squeeze the Lord in here as well. But if you've had small children, sometimes you just want to get alone. If you've had a tough day at work, if people have been hounding you and been all around you, sometimes you just want to get away by yourself for a while. So, so solitude can be a wonderful thing. You can be alone without being lonely. 
So we're not talking about simple solitude. Loneliness is not just being lonesome either. So you see, there's a difference. If you travel, if you're in business where you have to travel, you know, you may become lonesome for your family. But your family is that much sweeter because you know that you will be back with your family again. And so you can't wait to get home. Uh, many years ago, I did a, an awful lot of traveling uh, in my business, and I could not wait to get back home. I don't care where I was staying, it wasn't the same as my home. I don't care what food the restaurants had, it was not the same as Miss Ruth Ann's food. And the Lord had his blessings upon that. You know, it, it, you, you may be lonesome with, for your family, and that can be a good thing, because it increases your readiness to be home and to get in home. So loneliness is also not just isolation. Surrounded by everyone in this, this worship service today, someone may be, feel isolated. All right, you may be visiting us this morning, and you see all of, all of these people around here that are church family, talking about the times that we had last night, talking about the, the wonderful fellowships that we've had, and you feel just a little disconnected. Well, friends, we want you to know that it doesn't have to be that way. We want to welcome everyone into this fellowship. We don't want to go to heaven and be missing a single person who we've seen here. Every face that has ever walked into the sanctuary, we want to see in heaven. And all God's children said. Amen. So what am I talking about? True loneliness, absolute true loneliness, is feeling unneeded, uncared for, unwanted, maybe even feeling unnecessary. And let me tell you, if I can just share this right up front. You have been born to glorify God and to worship God. And you don't ever need to feel lonely. I just want to say that right now as we work our way through this message. But folks may feel separated from everyone. That is true loneliness. And how do we arrive at that? Well, it's because we have three great emotional needs. Every single person has these emotional needs. First, we all have a desire to love and to be loved or be intimate with another fellow human being. Everybody wants to be loved. Everyone needs someone to love, someone that, that is significant in your life. It may be your wife, it may be your brothers and sisters, it may be your parents, or it could be all of those, but we all have a need to be loved and to love. Second, we all want somebody who knows us and really understands us. I would like for you to know that I mostly understand my wife and she really understands me. <laughs> but we all have that need, that, that there are times when you don't even need to talk and your spouse simply knows how you feel. Amen? Finally, we have a desire to be needed. See, when these desires are not met, then you're going to be lonely. So how does someone arrive at this position of loneliness? Even for the child of God, even for the Christian that knows and loves and trusts Jesus Christ, how is it possible to arrive at this position of loneliness? Well, um, that's what we're here for today. But let me give you just a few possibilities. Possibly, the person has been rejected in the past. Maybe a spouse walked out. Or your children, maybe even your parents have cut you off. And now you're afraid of any relationship because you've been hurt so badly. I'm here to tell you today that Emmanuel, God with us, has come to be with you. He is a friend that is closer than any friend that you could possibly ever have. Other people have a poor image, a poor self-image. They're afraid to reach out to friends because they're, they're afraid that these friends may not reach back. In other words, the feeling may not be reciprocated. They have a deep-seated insecurity. And since they've never really accepted themselves as God has, then they, then they can't accept others. And so, friends, people feel, feel that, have that feeling of insecurity. But you never need to feel insecure in the presence of Almighty God. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ... There is nothing that is going to be more wonderful, more awesome, more incredible than the ability to stand in the presence of God, bathed in the, in the redeeming blood of our Lord Jesus Christ one day. But I can think of nothing more frightening than to stand there in our, your own merit before the gaze of God. We simply don't want to be there. Then there are people who have gone through pain and suffering. Maybe the loss of a child. A child has died. 
or a spouse. A spouse has died or a grandchild has passed away. Uh, my, my wife and I, we, we lost a grandchild uh, many years ago. A sweet little baby, Dakota Lee Brister. And he, uh, he died in his sleep in a bassinet right next to the parents because they were, my, my son and his daughter, they were so frightened of something like that happening and never made a sound. But we know be, that, the, that Dakota is in heaven right now. And he's all that God ever meant him to be. And someday we will be rejoined with that child. Uh, Miss Ruth Ann used to hold that baby. And he was one of those babies who just made the coolest sounds. He had all these little coos and all these little sounds that he made. He was just an amazing little baby. Uh, we lost, uh, my mother lost uh, her husband, my father. They've been married many, many years. And uh, our brother, within weeks of each other this past year. And so... Uh, at those times, we can believe that no one else knows how we feel. That no one has ever suffered loss at this. In other words, we can think, all of us at times, people just don't know how much I've been hurt. And so they close themselves off. They close off their hearts. Now, this is not the best time to bring this up, but I don't know a better time. It's just one of those things. Uh, some people are lonely because they, they're, they're more self-focused. They focus on themselves. And, and by themselves, they cut others off. Amen? Amen. So, but uh, here's something I need to, everyone to understand. If you're listening on the internet, if you're, if you're listening to an audio CD or, or watching this on a DVD later, there is no life that is as empty as a self-centered life. No life. But there is no life so centered as a Christ-filled life. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Make sure you got it. There is no life as empty as the self-centered life. But there is no life so centered as the Christ-filled life. Now I'm going to meddle here for just a little bit. You're going, oh, Pastor, you haven't been doing that already? Listen, sometimes our own sin can make us feel lonely. We can feel separated from God because of our, our own actions. Maybe we've done something terrible and that sin has separated us for a short period of time from our perspective, from our Father. You guys understand, from our perspective. Listen, if you are a child of the living God, if you have asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, you are never separated from the Father. That was done on the cross by Jesus Christ. That was handled there. You are never separated from your Father. Now listen, church. Not all, not all loneliness is a result of all these problems that I've said here. Not all loneliness is a result of a sinful lifestyle. I want to be clear about that, but it is possible. But have you noticed we just live in a strange world? I don't know about you, but it's getting weird out there. Amen. Just watch the news sometimes. You don't even have to to watch the news. Just notice how disconnected people are nowadays. What am I talking about? Well, you go to the store and buy something. You go through the checkout counter, the person never looks up, never looks at you. You're, you're busy with your own little world. You put your plastic down. They pick the plastic up or the money or whatever it is and take care of, of paying for the stuff. They do their thing. They wrap your stuff up, they hand it to you, and no one ever makes eye contact. You never speak. If you try to speak, if you try to wish them Merry Christmas, if you try to ask how their day has been, they look at you like you're the one that's weird. <laughs> you ever notice that? Sometimes I just do it for that effect. Just to, you know what, I'm having a boring day, let me say, hey, Merry Christmas, you know, and then if they say hol Happy Holidays, I keep saying Merry Christmas till they get the point. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, We've simply become isolated, friends. So first, loneliness is a common fact. And all God's children said. Amen. Second, loneliness can be and loneliness is a crippling force. It's a crippling force. Few things hurt more than loneliness. This Christmas season, there will be people sitting at home whose hearts are absolutely crushed. They imagine everybody else is having a wonderful Christmas but themselves. Did you know... That 80%, are you ready for this church? 80% of those folks seeking psychiatric help, and by psychiatric help, I'm talking about Christian psychiatric health. 
80% of those people are simply lonely. They're missing that human companionship. And so people then become, Christians then become, spiritual dropouts. They don't come to church because they, 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 they have these feelings, these crushed feelings within themselves. And what happens then is they actually cut themselves off from where the help is. This feeling of isolation, this feeling of being cut off, the, the answer is here amongst your church family. The answer is in the presence of a holy God that died on the cross for our sins, that He would touch our lives, that He would be ever close. There is no friend so close as the Lord Jesus Christ is close. And so I really want to focus on this point of Emmanuel because point number three is Jesus is God's answer to man's loneliness. Jesus Christ is God's answer to loneliness. Emmanuel, God with us. Now that is so important. I cannot overstate how important that is because Jesus Christ knew loneliness like no one else has ever known loneliness that has ever existed. Isaiah prophesied in, in uh, chapter 53, verse 3 of the book of Isaiah that the, that the Christ child would come and he would be rejected. Look at John chapter 1, verse 11. Do we have that on the screen, uh, Miss Gabby? We do not have Well, turn in your Bible to John chapter 1. Isn't it exciting to be able to turn our Bible? John chapter 1. And let's look at verse 11. I got a new Bible here. And the pages are still stuck together. If it's still like that next year, you guys need to get on me. John chapter 1, verse 11. If you're there, say amen. amen. John chapter 1, verse 11. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Jesus faced rejection. Think about Christ's birth. No room at the end. Think about his crucifixion. They wouldn't even let the Son of God die within the city. Christ, God with us, died on a garbage heap. His disciples ran away. And then the worst rejection that, that is possible for the first time in eternity, this happened. Christ bows his head. He cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, God the Son bore the sins of the world, and God the Father cannot look upon that sin. Christ took every sin that had ever been committed, every sin that is being committed this very second, every sin that it will ever be committed until he, uh, heaven, uh, the kingdom comes. He took all of those sins upon himself. Everything that's ever been done. And so when, when, I, when I see the pictures of the cross, when I see the pictures of the cross, which by the way, Christ is not on there, amen? amen. He's in heaven. But when I see the pictures of the cross, when I, when, I, when I think about Christ on the cross, I think it is my sin, O Lord, that, is, that has you there. It is my sin, O Lord, that, that drove the nails through your feet and through your hands. It is my sin, O Lord, that caused you to be separated by a holy God simply so that I could never be separated again from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is not them, Father. It is me. It is my sin, O God. Jesus knew loneliness. Jesus knew rejection. Jesus knew betrayal. Now you're probably saying, wow, Pastor, this is Christmas, and you're really kind of bumming me out here. All right? Friends, I just want you to know that Jesus Christ knows how you feel when you're down. He's been there. He's been cast off. He knows, and He's here to help. Amen? Amen. So how can Emmanuel help you? Let's look at John chapter 15, verse 12. John chapter 15, verse 12. Turn there in your Bibles. When you're there, someone say amen. amen. John chapter 15, verse 12. All right, this is great. This is my commandment, verses 12 through 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as, as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, for if you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Look at verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you 
and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. Amen. You are called a friend of God. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Some folks say, I have no friends. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you do. You, you are a friend of God. Huh. God actually calls me friend. I can't imagine that day. Some days I don't like me. I don't like all that chuckling out there. But listen, just for a moment. Forget everybody else is here in this sanctuary. And think about this. Think about this deep in your heart. He loves you personally. He loves you individually. God does not love all of us. God loves each of us. He loves you individually and personally. He is as much your friend as if he had no other friends in all of the creation. Have you thought about that? That is, when you look at the tone, when you look at the context of that passage that we just read, Christ is speaking specifically to individuals. It's as if he had no other friend except you. When you pray, your friend turns and inclines his ear to what you're saying. You are a friend of God. Why? Because he knows a secret. You don't need all the things of the world. What you need is a Savior. We each need a Savior. And Jesus is the only one that can meet that deep need. You know, I was thinking about Zacchaeus. Everybody know the story of Zacchaeus? Yeah, we, I see you and Miss Ruth Ann start rocking around here. You guys know the song. All right? In Luke chapter 19, as a tax collector, Zacchaeus was an absolute outcast. Okay? Absolute outcast. The Bible says that he wanted desperately just to catch a glimpse of Jesus Christ. Problem, big crowd, and he was a little short fella. Big problem. So he climbs up a tree. You guys remember the song, right? I saw y'all bouncing around. Don't act like you weren't. Uh, Laura and Miss Melanie and Miss Ruth Ann. All right, you guys know the song. I'm not going to sing it. I'm, I'm going to bless your heart today by not singing that. All right? So, he climbs up in a tree, and uh, Jesus comes along, and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. Now, you may, never, may have never thought thought about what he said next. He says, for I must stay in your house today. That word must there is better rendered need. Can you imagine that? Zacchaeus, I need to stay in your house today. God needs me? He needs to stay in my house? Can you imagine what went through that little man's mind that day? Huge crowd. Everyone trying to get close. Everyone wants a glimpse of the Lord. Everyone part of the big event. Everybody wants to be... And all he wants is simply a peek. Because remember, he's a tax collector. Anybody love the tax collector? Well, we need to. They need Jesus too. Especially April 15th. So why would this Jesus be any different? Zacchaeus is probably thinking. Because Jesus Christ is different. He is. Why? Because God, the Lord Jesus, looks at the heart. Amen. He looks at the heart. He doesn't look at the stature of the little fellow. He saw someone that climbed a tree to catch a glimpse. Friends, out of everybody that was there that day, Christ notices someone straining to see him. And God singles him out. And calls on him personally. Right there. Zacchaeus must think, he knows me. He needs me. Now I want you to imagine that, brother or sister. Because I can tell you today, without any stutter, without any stammer, without any fear, without any apologies, without any hesitation, that Emmanuel, God with us, knows your name. Amen. He knows your name. And not only does he know your name, he has a name written upon his hand. Your name written upon his hand. And it's ever before his face is what he writes in the book of Isaiah. And he wants you. And God is here to cure your loneliness. There is no need to feel lonely because God is with you. Now let me tell you what friendship with Jesus Christ will do for you. Let's call it the Emmanuel factor. Amen?
Let's hit, first off, it will elevate you. You might want to write this in your margin somewhere. Having God, having Emmanuel, having God with us as your friend elevates you. You ever meet someone that's a name dropper? Well, I was with Donald the other day, talking about Donald Trump. <laughs> you know, I was with Donald, or I was with so-and-so, or I was with uh, the pastor from Nimini Dibbity Church. All right? You ever, you ever catch people like that? Name droppers. All right? Hey, guys. You can be the ultimate name dropper. You can say, hey, let me tell you who my friend is. His name is Jesus. Amen. The one that made the universe. The one that made the moons and the stars. The, the stars drip from his fingertips. That's my friend. Amen. You, got, you want to be a name dropper? I got a name to drop. So he elevates us. Before the Father, he elevates us. And friends, having Jesus as our friend enlarges us. Let me tell you the secret of a friendship. Have you ever noticed, I said it enlarges us, have you ever noticed that generally when you have a friend, then the friends of that friend become your friend? Got it? How do I know that? How many of you folks were hugging each other at my house last night? How many of you folks were hugging each other in church this morning? Good Lord, it would, it would wipe the Presbyterians out. You know? And I love, I love the Presbyterian church. I love them. I love them with all my heart. Okay, I love the churches out there, but listen, years ago we went to a Promise Keepers. I believe Brother Divine with us. I know Brother Roger Fable was with us back then. And we sat there and we were watching, uh, we were sitting on the floor, and they had like 20 chairs across. But we noticed that right in front of us, where our church was sitting, we had about 50 men, there was 10 rows. And those rows had a ribbon right down the middle, so it was 10 and 10. And as we all filed in, two churches came that had reserved seats there, believe it or not. And all these men filed in, and on the right side came first, first pres of Fort Lauderdale. On the left side came a large Pentecostal church from Boca Raton. <laughs> and me and Roger, Brother Divine, Michael Chinqui went, oh, let's get some popcorn and watch this. <laughs> this is going to be good. But do you know what those brothers did? At the end of about four hours of worship and praising God and prayer, I noticed that our Pentecostal brothers had toned it down just a bit. And I'm almost positive. I saw one or two hands go up on the right-hand side there. Why? Because we serve a, a mighty God. Amen. And it's not about our denominations, while, even though I have some fun with it once in a while. It's about Jesus Christ. And if they preach Jesus Christ, I'm their friend. And if someone gets saved in that church, praise God. You know what? Let's get folks saved. Let's get them in heaven. We'll work on the theology. I think personally that when we get to heaven someday, the biggest sound that we'll all hear is, Oh. Oh. Went right off my notes. All right. So therefore, no brother or sister in Christ is ever just an acquaintance to us. They are a friend because they're a friend of Jesus and Jesus is a friend of mine. Our friend with Jesus enriches us as well. Do we have Luke chapter 10 verses 23 and 24, Miss Gabby? We don't. Turn to Luke chapter 10. I did all this for a purpose, by the way. Luke chapter 10. When you're there, verses 23. Someone say amen if you're there in a, in a paper Bible. Luke chapter 10, verses 23 and 24. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and, sh and have not seen it, and to hear what you have heard and not heard it. Look at what it says there first. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately. He said it privately. Jesus is saying to the disciples, Come over here. When God talks to your heart, He's saying, Come here, I want to talk to you for a moment. This is private. I want to tell you something. He's telling the disciples, The things that you're seeing, the things that you're hearing, kings and prophets have wanted to know this. You're going to get into some things that Solomon didn't know about. You're going to learn some things that the prophet Isaiah didn't know. And Jesus is telling you today, child of God, for any of you that have come to the saving grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, Jesus is saying to you, Come here, listen to me. The things that you're seeing, the things that you are hearing, kings and prophets have wanted to know this. Solomon didn't know about this. I'm going to, you're going to learn some things that the Isaiah did not know. Now here's the illustration. Nobody has all the answers to what's in the Bible except God. Amen? But non-believers really don't understand. You know why? It's because the Bible is a love letter to his friends. Are you a friend of God? 
then the Word of God is written right to your heart. Once you're a believer, you come to church, the Scriptures are read, the preacher, hopefully, clearly explains it, and bang, you got it. And you get your life points. And by the way, that's what, why I insist on you having your Bible open in front of you. You see, the same Holy Spirit will bear witness to all believers' hearts. And because Emmanuel, God with us, speaks to me privately, because he's written me a personal love letter, I am never lonely. Amen? Amen. For everyone sitting here today, wherever you come from, Whatever your status is right now, wherever your stance is with your family, with your friends, here's what I want you to understand. You can never be, have Jesus Christ as your friend until you have Jesus Christ as your Savior. Are you lonely? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? You don't need to be lonely. Do you feel rejected? If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you never need to feel rejected. You see, to be his friend, you only need to have your sins forgiven. And when he becomes his friend, now this is the good part, when Jesus Christ becomes your friend, when you become a Christian, it is your duty, it is your honor, it is your privilege to introduce your friends to your friend. To share Jesus Christ. Some folks say, well, Pastor Larry, people dismiss me. People reject me. Some people mock me when I share Jesus Christ with me. Count that as a blessing. Pastor, what are you talking about? That is God's affirmation to you that that person really needs Jesus Christ. If, you, if all you do is share truth and grace and mercy and share with them the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and they get angry, they get rejectful, they, get, they, they want to fight about it, that is God's affirmation to you, Christian, that you're doing the right thing and that that person really needs Jesus Christ. Why else would they act like that? Amen? Amen. You know, I, I love sharing the gospel because it's impossible to fail. We're not called to save these people. We're called to share the gospel. Go over there, share the gospel, did my job, time to move on. Amen? Share it with someone else. Now, as a praise team comes, you may be wondering what you're doing here today. Alright? Some of you may be wondering, if you're not having been coming to this church, if you're a visitor here today, if you're watching on the internet or watching a DVD or listening to audio, you may be wondering, what on earth am I doing here? Why am I reading this? Why am I, why am I listening to this? Why am I even sitting here? Why, oh why, oh why, did I come today? You want to know why? You're not here today to get the person that invited you to church 100 times off your back. You're not here to make mom happy or dad happy or granny happy. You are here at the personal invitation of the Holy Spirit of God. And you're here for one reason and one reason only. To meet your Savior. To open your heart and to give your life to Jesus Christ. If I could do it for you, I would. If your friends or family members could do it for you, they would. If this praise team could do it for you, they would accept Jesus Christ for you, but they cannot. This is something that you have to do yourself. But I'm here to tell you on the authority of the Word of God, if you will open up your heart, if you will receive the crucified, risen Son of God as your personal Lord and Savior, He will forgive every sin. He will come into your life to give you peace. And you will never, ever need to feel lonely again. And then one day when He comes again, oh, what a day that will be. Amen, church? One day when He comes again, or when you die, because you have Christ as your friend, He will take you home to heaven, a place where there are no tears, where there is no pain, where there is no suffering, to be with Him forever and ever. Here's the best part of this whole sermon, other than the fact that we've come to the end of it. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, here's the secret. Here's the best part. You can take care of that today. You can take care of that right here today. If you're listening on the internet, you can take care of it where you're sitting. If you're listening on a DVD or watching a DVD, you can take care of it sitting there in your living room. 
All you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Thank you so much for being so patient here this morning. As we've come here today, and with our eyes closed, our heads bowed, whether you're sitting here in this sanctuary or you're somewhere else, you can ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life and never be lonely again because you will have Emmanuel, God with us. And so if you've come to that point, where whether it was something the praise team did or the greeter with the smile on their face that welcomed you or something this old preacher said reading through the Word of God that touched your heart and you want to become known as a Christian, you want a Savior, all you have to do is pray these simple words. Lord Jesus, today I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I accept you as my Lord. I accept you as my God. I believe you died on the cross. That you were in the grave three days. But on that third day, you rose again. Please forgive me, Lord Jesus. If you did that, a great shout has gone up in heaven. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels have given a shout. Because John 14, 6 says, Jesus speaking says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way to God except through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us today. For more information, visit our website at www.lhcfl.com. Visit us on Facebook or get the Church Link app from the App Store. Again, thank you and we hope to see you in service soon.